Uh, I want to start out this evening. I want to welcome those who are here live uh, locally, which I so appreciate the inspiration of you being here. And also those that are joining us on the, the website. And especially I hear that we have uh, a dear friend from Tokyo that has joined us too. So welcome. Uh, the first thing I want to tell you is a little bit about, I'm not going to talk a lot about me, but I want you to understand the style, how I uh, facilitate uh, I'm reluctant to call myself a, t a teacher because I believe that all of us have a teacher within us. It's an innate intelligence that, w that comes with us as a soul when we are born in. We have, we have stories, we have experiences. I mean, there's no such thing as looking at a little baby and thinking a baby is starting from zero because you look into the baby's eyes sometimes and you really see Oh, that's an old soul. <laughs> There's just something you see sometimes and know that they've brought in with them. So we're all a continuation of some kind of story that is going on. I'm not sure that we totally know where we're going and what it's like, but let's enjoy the journey. And I hope that you'll enjoy the journey. So I call myself a facilitator because I don't want to take away from that intelligence that is teaching you. So I want to facilitate the teacher that is within us. Since the teacher is more at the soul level, that means it speaks soul language. Now think about this. If you were from Germany, for instance, you would your native tongue would be German, of course. If you're from Swedish, it would be Swedish. America, ah, could be anything, but most of us, it's English. What I'm saying to you is you speak the language of the culture or the place in which you first learn how to communicate. So uh, we have to realize the soul has a language of its own. And the head doesn't always understand that language. So you get that language sometimes in a aha moment or an epiphany or, oh, I, I, I knew that, but I'd forgotten it feeling. So that's how things have to be translated. And that's why we need classes such as this class and other classes that may, you may be going into because you want to understand what is already going on inside of you. And uh, we all know, but we don't always understand what we know, right? So we read books, we listen to speakers, we do all kinds of things outside of ourselves to stimulate that inner knowing. So never give a teacher your power. I do not want people to give me the power to be their teacher or their guru or whatever, but I want to empower you to say that it is what you need to know is already in you. And possibly if you're attracted to a class such as this or others, then that is saying that you're at a place in which to receive understanding of what you already know through that class or workshop or the book that you're reading. Um, I don't always stay strictly with notes because oftentimes something happens and I call it channeling my higher self and it comes through me and not from me and that is based upon whatever it is that the universal intelligence is wanting to say at that particular time. So I leave myself open to that. I don't want to over organize myself but to leave the ability to be spontaneous and bring present truth to us. So that's kind of how I work. I also have studied many different schools of thought, and I will pull out of my resources of knowledge and information whatever I think is the best way to say something. So I do quote at sometimes a, maybe a scripture, a Christian scripture. I may use something from A Course in Miracles. I may come from a more Buddhist idea. Whatever I've studied that I've downloaded as data in my brain is what my intelligence or my spirit is going to use to try to communicate the best with you. Why I chose this to be the first uh, series of classes that I want to do is because of the urgency that I feel about us moving into a new uh, vibration. We could call that vibration a new uh, stage of evolution. We can call it the shift. There's many words out there, but everybody's kind of saying the same thing. 
It's just that I don't believe that the shift is linear. I believe that it's more vertical, that we're moving to a higher vibration of what it means to be a human being. And uh, to do that, if, if, I'm, if I'm correct at all, what I feel I've heard in myself, and I can only take responsibility for how I interpret the inner voice, but for me, I was told no more lifetimes in this third, fourth dimension that would be moving into a fifth dimension level. If I'm correct with that at all, then there is no way to continue working out such things as the law of karma because there is no linear, we're moving, spiraling. So that means this is a good time to clear it all out. Even the stuff we know about and the stuff we don't know about. Because when you get through with this, you're going to find out how much stuff we carry for just being a human. <laughs> just incarnating into the human experience itself. Even when you're born, you're born into your parents' pain bodies. So it's something that people can't say, well, I, I chose and didn't choose this, therefore I don't. It's, it's part of the human thing. So, uh, so, what is the pain body? Now, the pain body was made famous, uh, I don't know, 10 years ago or so uh, w by Oprah. I mean, if you make it to Oprah, you're going to be world known. And uh, she was very taken with the book. What I found out, and I also taught this, uh, I was this minister of education at a church in Charlotte before I moved here in January. And so I've taught four years of, this, of these classes. And uh, the reason that I did it is because so many people said, I've had the book, but I don't understand it. I really do not understand the book. I know it was good, and, but I don't get it. And so I think a lot of us are that way about a lot of things sometimes. So we want to focus in on that. So what is our pain body? The pain body is the collective manifestation of all the pain, misery, and sorrow a person has ever gone through in their entire life or lives, if you believe that. And all things they inherited from their culture, from family, and from history as well. Actually, we're ending 10,000 years of human adolescence. 10,000 years ago, it was dominion over the earth, men over women, domestication, and reductionism. And therefore, during this time, we were to develop an identity, what's called an ego. An ego. Now, actually, there's two sides to ego. The ego is kind of the, the new villain in the drama, but it really isn't. There's a side of the ego that is very good, and that is the true identity of who you are versus the identity you think you are based upon outside stimuli, such as what culture has taught you, religions have taught you, so on and so forth. So you have kind of a split s aspect of yourself, a self you truly are, which is authentic, and a self that you have become based upon information that you have validated in your belief system as a perception. So therefore, you will, the world you live in out here is a world of your perception. See? So, uh, this is a tremendous time to realize that humanity is going through birth pains, growing up pains. And uh, we need to realize that I feel many who are attracted to this type of teaching are not here by any accident. But you are here to stand in this gap while one age or one world is ending and a new one is coming in. Now that's overlapping right now. We know that Aquarius is already overlapping. I've been starting for a long time, but it takes a long time for something to come to a normal state where it's normalized. So we still got two norms that are kind of around, the one that was hanging around and the one that's trying to stabilize itself. So this is a time of being maybe a little even unbalanced, uh, even confused or unsure, uh, that's not a bad thing. It just says that things are shifting and that 
the old patterns are not holding you like they used to. For instance, we know magnetic fields have changed. You that have studied the Schumann frequency uh, that has been around for years and years and years that the Earth heartbeat has been around 6.7 heartbeats per minute. Now it's up to around 30 something. So that means the whole magnetic fields of the planet has changed and your cells follow that because you are the children of Mother Earth. Therefore, what Mother does, her children also is trying to match. So that means that you're probably going through some interesting symptoms uh, in your life mentally and physically that maybe uh, Western medicine doesn't understand or know how to diagnose because it is really more spiritually based. Um, I often say to people, a caterpillar doesn't uh, bring itself down into cha uh, chaos and, and mush to reorganize itself as an enlightened caterpillar. So why would we go through all of this to come out to be the same kind of an enlightened human? We want to become something different, okay? We want to become an, a different species of human, and that is a sacred human, divine human, where the divine and the human are coming together as one. How? How do we get a pain body in the first place? The events of our past can leave an energetic imprint on the emotional, mental, and physical bodies in such a way as to become the subconscious motivator of current day behavior. Now, I'm going to go through that again because that's one of the most important statements that I can give you. The pain body is the collective manifestation of all pain, misery, and sorrow a person has, but these represent the events of our past and every event, like everything else, has an energy pattern to it. Before it becomes matter, it has to be an energy pattern. So our past can leave an energetic imprint on our emotional, mental, physical bodies in such a way that it literally becomes, at the subconscious level, level the motivator of our current day. Now, let me explain that to you. What would that look like? Uh, a day that's a little off to you. You don't know why, nothing particular has so much changed, but all of a sudden you just have this feeling that you're out of tune with the day. Something doesn't feel right. So we go through all kinds of issues and, and feelings and emotions sometimes that we don't know where they come from. Well, really where they come from is from the subconscious. So we can sit here and consciously think about, okay, I'm not sure I have a pain body. I think I've taken care of all the pain and suffering I've gone through in the past. I've been to classes. I do positive thinking. I do affirmations, which I love, by the way. It's a part of it, but it's not the answer by any means. And science has proved that to do that, you have to be in control. And when this thing really happens, it's not about being in control of your thoughts and changing your negative to a positive thought and stay in control of having it. It's not about control at all. It's about a complete change of nature. It is something that is normal for you, something that just happens that's a part of you. So events in the past leave energetic imprints on our emotions, physical and bodies. Now. <clears throat> Think of a iceberg, and the tip of the iceberg is outside the water, but most of the iceberg is under the water. Now, everything that's under the water would represent everything that is in your subconscious. That means not a whole lot's in your conscious mind at a time. Most of it ends up in your subconscious. And we know through study and psychology that most what drives us is under the water. It is our subconscious. And this is where I think uh, violent behavior comes from in many cases when people do something and they don't know why they did it. Because when they come back to their conscious mind, they go, I would have never done that. I'm sorry I did that. I, I think it's, it's something that has not been taken care of that is deep in the subconscious that for whatever reason gets hungry for something and therefore it creates a situation outside of itself. So these discordant frequencies 
can also become lodged in the crystalline structure of our tissue. Now, back to the iceberg just a minute. Here's what I understand. The human brain, as mysterious and magnificent as it is, can only retain six bits of data at one time. The subconscious can actually hold as much as 11 million bits of data. Now, where do you think the balance, where where's the balance? The balance is what you don't think about on a daily basis, or even remember, or in some cases don't even know. I do uh, work with tuning forks and have clients, and it's amazing how much trauma I find in people's fascia or connective tissue. Because that's the first thing we are as a ball of, of uh, energy, as, as a plasma, and Wilhelm Wright says that either we're going to do one or two things, even based on our environment, while we're being formed in the womb, we're going to contract or we're going to expand. So now that people are understanding that, they're talking to the baby, and, and they're singing to it, and they're playing Mozart, and they're doing all kinds of things to try to give a good environment for the baby to feel it can expand itself. Therefore, I'll have a more expanding experience when it gets here. The body will be more relaxed, will be more free. If we're more rigid, it's because maybe we weren't wanted, there was violence outside, whatever, and we took that. And to protect ourselves, we contracted ourselves. So people don't realize how much trauma that they carry in their fascia or connective tissue that they don't even know about because you was in the womb, right? So you didn't have the intelligence at the time to know what was going on, but that doesn't mean you were exempt from not receiving some kind of experience of what was going on on the outside of you and the inside of you. The food the mother was eating, the mood the mother was in, all of these things is the first things that begin to find themselves energetically imprinted within who you're going to be. <clears throat> So these discordant frequencies can be also lodged in the crystalline structure of our tissue. Now we call that here the bioetheric body. And we believe that people kind of have this backwards that the physical body has this aura. We more deal with the aura ending up as the physical body. And uh, that means <coughs> kind of that what's in the etheric body is going to end up in your physical body. So you actually can find out where these discordant patterns of imprints are nine to ten months before they ever manifest in your physical life by finding them in the etheric template. That's preventive. And that's one of the hardest things there is for me to sell people is preventive. People want to wait till they get the diagnosis and they get serious. They're ready for anything. They'll go to anybody for anything because they're desperate. Why do we wait until we get to that point when we could have taken care of it? I use examples sometimes. I was raised with, uh, at a home that had a piano. And my folks had a man come out every year with a little tuning fork and tune that piano. Because we didn't want the to get, piano to get dissonant, dissonant. So we didn't let it get there. We tuned it to keep it where it's supposed to be. For years and decades, we used to tune our cars. Now computers kind of do it. But at one time, you had to take your car in. After so many thousand miles, and uh, come on in, a uh, thousand miles, uh, and you go in and you tune your car because you don't want your car to break down. Well, why can't we tune ourselves so we don't break down, so we don't get disease or get ill or sick? So <clears throat> all of us have these energetic imprints on the emotional, mental, and physical bodies. And most of them end up suppressed into the subconscious. And again, because the subconscious is holding more of your information energetically, it is driving your everyday life. 
So what happens to you in a day and you wonder why you feel this way and where did that thought come from and where did that emotion come from? Why do I feel discouraged? Why I feel depressed? All of that is underneath the subconscious that is coming up. So this is basically where the breakdown of healthy frequency information can lead to everything from uh, weakened immunity, less than optical organs, nervous system, brain, hormonal and skeleton functions such as chronic pain. I heard a doctor today on TED Talk, which I loved, but I just happened to be somewhere else. You know, the other, other things pop up now that you're not really looking for, but they show up. And it was about uh, disease being an illusion and I wanted to hear it, so I listened to this talk, and he's on the right track because he said he had a baby boy that was dying. They didn't know what to do. They rushed him to the hospital. He said, I couldn't do anything. The doctors couldn't do anything. But bottom line, what they found out is he had too much iron in his blood, and what would have taken care of that was more vitamin D. And that changed this doctor, and he immediately went to the why people get sick rather than being sick. And he has it. He has studied diet. He has studied toxicity. He has studied our psychological emotions and everything. And I wanted him so much to go a little bit further because it really doesn't just start with the food we eat and all of that. It starts in our emotions and our feelings and our unresolved issues that we stuff into our subconscious as these discordant energy imprints. And as I said, for you that came in, just being in a human experience, you have it. You don't even have to know what you did, but you have it. So why? I've given you what and how, why? Pain body has become, uh, has become certain patterns of life some content can be different. So here's some questions I want you to contemplate or ponder. Does the voice in your head have a life of its own? Just contemplate that for a moment with no judgment, right or wrong, good or bad. This is what's going on. We've got people in the world that have their story and they're not budging. And we're clashing like crazy, in the, especially in the political. Because everybody is so set with their mindset and their belief system. You got in a lot of religions. My religion's right. All other religions is wrong. You got it in everything. People who have this voice in their head that they think is the truth. And maybe it's not. And we go through that in the class. Is your story really true? We'll take you through that. And you will not believe how many students find out, well, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, that's not exactly the way it happened. And the minute you can find that, you can get in. And the truth begins to dissolve the unresolved issue, which is your pain body. And that's the way it happens. S next question, do you find yourself uh, interacting the past over and over again? Think about it. Do you have a pattern? Then you give an example. As a minister and as a speaker, I have counseled a lot of people, most of them are women, who have come to me and said, I want to get out of an uh, abusive relationship or a marriage that's not working or whatever. And this could be anything, but that's just what comes to mind. And uh, I counsel, counsel them, I pray for them, whatever they need to do. And they do, uh, in many cases, not all, my, my Preferences they bring the maiden come together and change, but if they can't and they have to leave, then they're free of that. Then I hear from them three months, six months later, a year, and they'll call me and say, David, I've met the one. This is the one I've been looking for. This is my soul mate, whatever that means. And I said, God, I'd like to meet him. And he comes in doesn't take me 30 seconds to realize same content, different form. Just because just you change physical form 
does not mean you've changed the content of the past experience that you had. And the next thing I'm realizing in a year or two or whenever, they're going to be calling me and saying, uh oh, I'm in another abusive relationship. So we have patterns that we keep repeating even subconsciously in our life and think what a life would be by breaking those patterns and living the mindful life, living the awakened life, living it by really uh, wisdom of the heart uh, would upgrade your life immensely. But we can't carry this old baggage around of all this that we carry that we talked about earlier. The next one is, are you looking for a different way to handle life's challenging situations? Right now, we have specific issues going on at this particular uh, place and time. We have a lot of things going on. How are you handling it? Boy, Facebook. Oh, my God, I can't take it very long because I have friends on there that I've known for years that are like family and they're like all... You know, some's on this side, some's on that side, and they're at each other. And uh, uh, I just can't believe how people are handling the present situation. Are we handling it from a higher place in ourselves? Or are we caught into the drama of it? And that's what the pain body loves is drama. It feeds on drama. So it... You, the more drama you have, the more you feed your pain body. And the more we get you off the stage, Shakespeare's quote is, we're mere players standing on the stage waiting to go on. And it's really true. We really are acting out the stories in our head, whether they're true or not. And because most of our stories aren't true, and I've certainly found that out with most people I've dug down deep that the, most of the stories they have is not true. It's a made up story in their head of what, what it felt like it happened or they thought it happened or what somebody else diagnosed that it happened. And when people get free of that, it frees up energy in them to get intuitive and creative and direction starts coming in their life and they begin to uh, attract different frequencies of friends and people, jobs and whatever. It's the natural laws of the universe working, but it will not work if we do not give it the freedom in which to do what it does. So, what about doing something about our pain body? I love this quote by Carl Jung that says, I think it's going to come up here in a minute. The psychological rule is that an inner situation not made conscious will what? Happen as fate. So don't think because you have squashed down all your stuff from childhood and all your issues and now you've got this new positive outlook mentally that you have gotten rid of the energetic imprints of those experiences. That's deeper work. Some people call it shadow work. If you're familiar with shadow work, it's going in to the subconscious. But people say to me all the time, go to the light. Go to the light. No, I said, I am the light, right? Every one of us is a spark of light. Go to the darkness. That's where light likes to go. Light loves to go into the darkness and disprove it. Are you, under, you understand what I'm saying? If we turn all the lights out in here, it would just be an absence of light. It'd be nothing of itself. And you turn the lights on and it shows you the darkness does not even exist. It's not a war between the two. Like some religions teach, you've got light and dark working against each other. No, just turn the light on. Turn the good on and you'll see there is no evil. It's all in this awakening place in us. So, awakening is the name of the game. And we're going to talk about that. Living as an awakened human. So, I, uh, this morning, had an experience. I was in a parking lot somewhere. Went into uh, a place of business and came out. And I was pulling out. And something caught my eye over here. And reflected, and I thought, oh my God, somebody's about to hit me. I'm, I'm, somebody's backing into me. 
Well, I turned around, it wasn't. But the story in my head. Now, where did I get the story in my head? It just came up like that. I didn't have to think about, okay, now I'm going to sit here and think about uh, a car hitting me. Maybe I didn't analyze it. It was an instant response that came right out of my subconscious. And then I thought, oh, my God, about three years ago in, in Charlotte, North Carolina, where I lived, I had a terrible wreck. And it was one of those, I don't know where it came from, just barreled into my car. And I relived that experience, even though it was three years old, I experienced that this morning. It felt just like that because I have it. So do you, do you find reacting the past over and over again? That's the point. Pretty soon it becomes, it becomes a pattern. And now every time I think something is coming at me, I draw up that same pattern in me of fear. And I do that so much that I become fearful. Huh? If I act fear enough, then I take on a fearful attitude about life and I'm fearful about everything because I've practiced fear. You become what you practice, right? Another thing that uh, I thought about is I used to go to my, my grandma's in the summer and she lived out in the country down a dirt road and I, I loved walking down to the little town but there was a lot of copperheads and this is in Arkansas, believe it or not, North Arkansas. A lot of snakes and copperheads around that part of the of, of where, where we lived. And I, as a kid, almost stepped on one. And I still, to this day, just f have that feeling of shock about that snake. It, it missed me, thank goodness, but it could have not. So that is an unresolved issue. Like, I, something in me got stuck. Like, okay, that could have happened. So, uh, so I'm walking down this road and I look ahead and I see something in the road. Oh my God, it is a snake. What do I do? Turn around and go back? I mean, I just sat there and experienced the fear that there was a snake. It looked just like it. Long story short, I made it close enough to see that somebody had thrown out a piece of a hose and it was a hose. So the story in my head was not true. But I, if I'd have turned around and went back and continued the story in my head, I'd have even fed more of a fear of something. But the truth made me free. And when you start knowing the truth, the truth will diminish your emotional pain body and you can live a more free life. One more example. I remember being a kid, maybe four or five years old, falling down and skidding my knee. I thought that was the end of the world for me. I remember it, at that age, I remember. I cried. It hurt so bad. That was the worst pain for me. And my mother held me and, you know, said it's going to be all right because she knew a bigger picture than I did. She knew that, well, wait till you get older. This is going to be minor <laughs> compared to some of the things that are going to happen to you. But at that moment, that was so important to me because it's all I knew. It was relative to that. So that is something that also I filed away in me. So what can we do about the pain body? And what will we cover in the six-week class that I hope you will consider being a part of? We're going to learn how do we feed and keep alive that part of our unconscious self. How do we develop issues in our life unconsciously just to feed something that is unconsciously? Again, I ask you to imagine a life free of that. A free of falling into those loops of consciousness where you keep repeating issues you don't know why you did it and all the while the subconscious was saying I'm hungry wake up and do something feed me so the fear that is an unresolved frequency is looking for fear grief is looking for more grief anger is always looking for something angry so I'll, I'll 
find somebody and find their buttons to push so we can push each other's buttons and fight. And I'm sorry to say that some couples do that. They push buttons and fight and then they make passionate great love. Yeah, that's how, how crazy it can get. And people don't understand why do I do that kind of behavior? Because it is deeply in the subconscious part of us. So I mentioned earlier that we have what I call the authentic self. Now you can use whatever you would like in the terminology of what to call that. Some would call that the, the, the divine aspect of ourselves or we can call it many different things. I just call it the authentic self, the real you, the you that was before this body. Okay. So, uh, I know I was taught, I had my whole beginning as a human and I needed to get into some religion and find the spirit. So that's what I did as a kid. I thought I didn't have it, so I needed to go get it. So I went to a church that could give me the spirit. Then I found out about 25 years ago, or 20 years ago, this famous quote now by D. Teller Chardin that says we are not human beings having a spirit, a spiritual experience, but we are spiritual beings having a human experience. Whew, what a shift. What a change. I am a spiritual being. That's the authentic self. That is the part of me that has been created. And what has been created part of me is whole now. But then this self I made over here because this is what culture said. This is what my parents said. This is what education said. This is what religion said. This is what the outside said and formed me into an image like unto them. You get that? That's your God's little G-O-D of the world who mold us into an image that benefits the system. Huh? And you that have kind of awakened from that have probably been misunderstood by a lot of old friends and family because people are intimidated by people who know their, their power. The center of their power is in themselves and not in the systems. It's very important that we that we find that. So here's what we will cover in the in the class. Week one, we'll go deeper into what your pain body made and how is it made. We will go into depth to understand the how. How did we how do we have one and how did we make it? Because I think if you understand how it happened, you can know what to do about it. You have to understand the how of it. Week two, how the pain body renews itself into patterns of our life. So I've touched on all these tonight, but these are going to depth into these things. How the pain body renews itself into patterns of our life. Three, the awakening to your inner purpose. Finding your inner purpose. Why am I here? Why have I incarnated at this particular juncture in history and in time? Why am I here as a male or a female or uh, as uh, African-American or Caucasian or whatever? All the things, all the labels that make us up in the human realm holds. It's, a, it's like a container that holds the treasure of your purpose. And your purpose goes further than making things just better. Better's good. Don't get me wrong. Better of anything is good. But actually your purpose is more deeper than that. It is for the assistance of a transforming our world, our planet, humanity, its thinking, its feeling. We will address in week four our nation's pain body. There's a national pain body, there's a racial pain body, and there's even children's pain bodies. And I keep thinking if people understood more how to deal with children. Now, my personal experience was I was a 10 month baby, 10 pounds, and that was it for my mother. I was the last, I was the on, only child, the only son, the only child, but 
and I had great parents and I love them, but they were not without their, their issues and their pain. And I, I find those selves in me because I'm, I was born into their pain body. So I have even unconsciously without learning it, some of the attributes that pop up in me and I go, oh my God, that's exactly the way my dad acted. Or this is exactly how my mother would have felt about this. Now this goes beyond DNA. That's a whole different subject that all used to just go to DNA. But <clears throat> DNA is not our destiny. Time magazine front page a few years ago. We know that DNA is just nothing but a bunch of water molecules. So that's, it's not DNA. It's not genetics. It's what we call epigenetics, which is environment food choices we make. So we're not victims at all. We're not imprisoned by who we were born into, by the race, by the, the sex, orientations, all the things that make us who we are as a human. We're not a victim to that. It's not written in stone. All we have to do is learn to make different choices. And when we learn to make different choices based upon higher wisdom, you know, everybody just says choices, but I think choices can be not good to be too free. I think you need to align your choices with divine purpose at the same time. What is my divine purpose? So it's important that you know what is your uh, purpose uh, in week three. Our nation's pain body. I thought that was something that is so going on right now that maybe we could all learn. And somebody said, well, I don't watch the news and I don't see this. I'm sorry, you're still affected by it. You can go live in a cave if you want to, but you can't get away from uh, what's in the airwaves. They come right through your house, right through your bedroom. It's all out there. You can't go hide yourself anywhere from it. There's nowhere to hide from it. So you're here to raise your consciousness to deal with it from a higher spiritual point of view rather than to become uh, a denial of it. And some religions bother me because they kind of teach that direction and I don't. I believe you're here to face it and see it differently and, and uh, shift the power of it to the more spiritual purpose that we're here for in the earth. Finally, we'll learn about thoughts, feelings, and emotions. And that's quite a subject when you get into it, let me tell you. To really understand what is a thought. What is a thought? Stanford University says you think 60,000 thoughts a day. My answer is you don't probably have a thought at all. You just have chemical uh, firings going on in your head all day long uh, based upon stories of data that you have downloaded from your past. That's not a thought. When you have a thought, it is a experience. That is what the aha thing is about. When you see Oprah, for instance, she's a big ha ha person. She, when she, and, and I was watching her uh, the other night with somebody that she was really getting turned on with. And you could tell she was getting a, th a what the person was saying was becoming the thought. She wasn't thinking about what they were saying, but what they were saying was becoming a thought that penetrated into her head. Do you get that? Yeah. The brain can think and think and think and think about stuff, but not be the stuff it's thinking about. Get that? But wonder if love became a thought, put itself into a thought and came right out of your heart and you would, f you would experience love, not just intellectually know about it. Right? So thoughts and feelings and emotions, what are they? How do they connect with us spiritually, mentally, and emotionally, and physically. And finally, the sixth week will be the week of break free karmic relief. Karmic relief. So we will, at that point, look into how can we break these patterns in our life and free up these patterns. Now let me say this, and, and then I'll open this up for any questions or whatever you want. There's two laws of thermodynamics. One, you cannot destroy energy. Second, but you can change its form. So when I say I have a, a, a pattern, uh, 
of anger, that's anger, that's made an energetic imprint. I don't want to take that energy out of me that's anger. I want to change what the energy has formed itself as anger, but I want to keep my energy. Now think about it. The more patterns that I let go of that's based on anger, fear, anxiety, prejudice, so and so forth, leaves that energy free. And all of a sudden I'm freeing up all this energy inside myself. What does that do? I get ideas I never had. I get guidance I never had. I get clear about myself and my life and my purpose and what I need to do with it. Because now you have the energy to do it. Now you manifest wonderful relationships because you bring in the frequency, not of the fear and the anger, but you bring in the frequency of what you replace the pattern with, and that's intention. Now you've put intention. And if your intention is, I want someone in my life that is a, a, a frequency match for me, that we can work together as twin flames and work for the world and not work on each other. Too much relationships where people are working on each other. I make you mad, you make me mad. I do this, I do that. It's not about that. It's about partnerships in the world that's working for our planet. That's my goal. And I'm not talking about just an intimate uh, partner, husband, wife. I'm talking about all the relationships of your life need to be frequency matches that stimulate your potentials and your possibilities. It gives you new insight by just being with them, being around them, you become something bigger than yourself with them. So, Karmic Relief starts next Wednesday night, 7 to 8, and we will go for six weeks. You can come and be here <coughs> for the whole six weeks, or you can, if you can't do that and miss, you, you will have a download in which you can download in the class if that's what you want to do. <coughs> We're asking <coughs> for uh, $15 per class, which would be six classes would be 75, 90, okay. But we're offering you, if you pay for all six of them, it is 60. So that's a pretty good deal. So all six of the class, that's only $10 a class. And uh, we, we've been here about three or four months and we've never hardly charged for, we've never charged for anything in here. So I got to start doing that because I got a space here <laughs> to pay rent for and do whatever's why we're, why we're doing that. So, and I think too, it's important that people have the exchange of giving and receiving. So I so appreciate you that came uh, to be here tonight. There's a nice little group here that's local and also all of us that are on uh, the webcast. How many do we have, Randall, that are? 15 on the webcast, so we welcome you to and hope that you'll join us also. So thank you so much for coming. Um, can we just take a moment to just do three heart breaths? I'm studying heart math right now. So I'm going to be a certified teacher for heart math, and I hope you'll consider that. What a great class that is to learn heart math. But we're going to do what we call uh, heart-focused breathing. So what you're going to do, you're going to breathe, but you're going to focus at the heart. So when you breathe, feel the breath coming for the heart. We're going to do that three times. So just close your eyes, breathe in at the count of five, and exhale at the count of five. Ready? Breathe in. Two, three. And exhale through the heart. Breathe in, centered at the heart. And exhale. Touch your heart with your hand. Breathe in. And exhale. Now slowly open your eyes and feel your body. How does that make you feel to do those breaths? You should feel more relaxed. Your shoulders should be down and not up like this. It's just amazing. That's the first thing I did when I thought somebody hit me today. I went to my heart focused breathing and did three of them and it just calmed me right down. So I'm going to use it all the time that I get uh, high strung <laughs> a little bit and I have that nature. So 
uh, that's a great way to do it. All right. Thank you.